In today's lesson, we're going to be looking at questions from the University Clinical Aptitude Test. In particular, looking at the abstract reasoning section and looking at those tricky spot the difference questions so that you can answer them perfectly and score highly in your UCAT exam. Hi and welcome back to the channel. My name is Dr. Ashley Hilton, founder of FutureDoc.co and today we're going to be looking at abstract reasoning of the University Clinical Aptitude Test and in particular we're going to be looking at those tricky questions where I call them the spot the difference questions where you have two patterns where all the shapes look identical, the number of shapes are the same, the type of shape are the same in each one and at first glance they look exactly the same and you can't tell the difference. So we'll go through a couple of questions I'll show you the basic way to do it, as I always do, and then we'll go through my intuitive technique for these types of questions that will help you rattle through this question really quickly so that you can save time and actually translate those extra seconds into the more difficult questions that you'll attempt in other parts of the abstract reasoning. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel in the bottom corner because there's a full series with all the questions that you might come across and specific techniques for how to tackle them. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and check out the playlist with all the available lessons. As I say in all the videos, this is going to be absolutely no benefit unless you actually try the questions. So get stuck in, get involved, have a go at the questions. I'll set the timer for you so you don't have to worry about that. Just hit play, grab a pen and paper, and let's get going. So question one coming at you in three, two, one, go! Okay, so for question one, let's go through the answers. So looking at the pattern, we'll start with, with set A. And as you can see that the shape type is all circles, so that we know that the pattern for that is not going to be related to this. Uh, the position, position I'll come back to at the end, because I'll just rattle through the other ones to show you the angles, they're all circles, so there's obviously no angles. There, again, because they're circles, there are no root or direction. Touching sides, well no, there's nothing touching sides. Area and size, no, nothing to do with it. Number of items, well there are four items in each set, in every box of each set, so that is relevant, but not a distinguishing feature. Intersections, we don't have any lines to intersect, and the number of sides is the same because it's four circles in each. So the important thing to see here is what distinguishes the sets from one another are two things, of position and shading. And at first glance, it doesn't look like position is actually relevant. When I always say, take a, take a step back, have a look, and see if there's anything that you can see when you take the 30,000 foot bird's eye view. And actually, we see from position that, that the first thing to note in set A always has a one circle in a corner. As we go through all the squares, we can see that it's actually always in the top left corner. And when I show you the highlighted version here, you can see that that's the case. And actually, on set B, we can also see that there's always a circle in the top right corner. It's always important when we go through the Spartans IBS or any of the techniques that I show you, not to just be satisfied with the first thing that you find. So carrying on, the next and the last one is shading. And we can also see that shading is significant here because in set A, we can see that there are two shaded circles in every single box. And then in set B, there's just one shaded circle in every single box. And that gives us the pattern that in set A, every single square has a circle in the top left corner and also has just two shaded circles. 
whereas B has a circle in the top right corner in every box and only has one shaded circle. So question one, the answer is set A because it has a circle in the top left corner and two shaded circles, so that fits with A. Test shape two is actually neither because uh, it doesn't have a circle in either top corner, so straight away that doesn't fit in anything. But then also test shape three is also neither because although it has a shape in the top right corner, it has two shaded shapes, which that fits with set A. So that doesn't fit neatly into either one. So that's A, neither, neither are the answers to that. So as I've showed you in all my videos, we start with the long, the basic approach, which is kind of a nice fallback safety net to fall back upon if you are struggling and don't know exactly what type of question you're dealing with. But as you gain more experience, I have something called the intuitive technique, which fits into certain types of questions. And that will massively help you speed up because it narrows down the number of possibilities that it can be. And lo and behold, for these types of questions, these spot the difference questions, I do have an intuitive technique for you. And the good news is, is once you can tell that these are the spot the difference type questions, because they're so similar, it actually means there are only a few possible things that distinguish these types of questions. So in the abstract reasoning of the University Clinical Aptitude Test, when you see these spot the difference type questions, there are only three things that you can have, which are shape, position, and conditional patterns. Now, conditional patterns, don't worry about for now. We won't do conditional patterns questions today because I'll do a whole lesson on that another time. So really, you only have to worry about shape and position. And looking back at the last question that we just did, you can see that essentially it's a combination of shape and position that helps you distinguish between these patterns and gives you the common theme that goes through each set. So now that we have a honed in view at these spot the difference type questions and know how to quickly approach them by looking at either shapes, position or conditional patterns, let's have a go at another question now and let's see if you can speed up by narrowing your focus down onto these two or three possible patterns that may occur. So question two, are you ready? In three, two, one, go! Okay, so I sincerely hope that you had a go at these questions and, and tried to work it out for yourself, but we'll go through the patterns now. So as we said, I, I said I won't do conditional patterns this one, so it's either gonna be position or shading, and most likely a combination of the two. So as we can see, in the first set, at first it doesn't look like positioning actually has any relevance. There are things in the corners, but then they don't carry over to, to the same corners in, in the subsequent. Um, and subsequent shapes. At first glance of this question, I was tempted to think that it might be something to do with the numbers that are in the corners, but no, not, nothing to do with that. So this is where I get used to get caught out, is that you need to focus on not just the position being the corner, but you also need to look at the center and the middle by the sides. So what the way I, it, I picture this is imagine a noughts and crosses grid with, where there are nine possible positions available. And just when you're scanning for position, scan all of those nine and see if there's anything in the same one of those positions throughout the grid. So then when we look at it, we can actually see that set A in the bottom middle square, or the bottom middle zone, should I say, has a shape, no matter what it is, in 
each of those areas every time for each of the squares. And as we can see in set B, there isn't a shape in that relative position every square. However, there is one in the central position for every single square. And not only that, we see that set A has two shaded shapes in each one, and set B has just one shaded shape in each one. And again, going back to, I think one of the questions that you might find is, is, well, when do I know that this is those spot the difference type questions? And as you can see, although it's, it looks really different and none of the squares or the sets might look the same, it's actually the same shape in every single square of, of all of those grids. And that means that the only difference is really the position and the shading of each one. And it might look confusing at first and make you think that it's different shapes or they might not all be the same number and, and type, but they actually are. So that's how you can tell this from say the overwhelming uh, shapes number of questions that I did in a previous video. And that's how you can tell that you just need to use the three elements that I discussed earlier. So looking through the answers, we can see that test shape one is going to be neither because although it has a shape in the bottom central position, it only has one shape, shape. So therefore that doesn't fit into A, definitely doesn't fit into B, so it's neither. Uh, question two has a central shape um, and also just has one shaded shape, therefore that does fit into B. And finally, test shape three has no shapes in the middle, no shapes in that um, cent lower central position that we deemed was important. And even though it has two shaded shapes making you think you say, the fact that it doesn't have a positional match means that it's also neither. So one of the questions you might be thinking is when should I apply this technique? Although it's a neat little technique, it does seem uh, at first you might wonder when is it relevant, when should I apply it? And it's kind of what I said before, where when you have all the shapes are exactly the same, um, there's the same number, and the only difference is between the shading and the positioning, that is when it's the spot the difference type questions, and this rule can apply. And because there are so many similarities, the shading, the positioning, and the conditional patterns which we'll come onto are the only really things that can differ. And as I said, the, the time to apply this particular intuitive technique versus the overwhelming shapes one is that you will see that all the shapes are the same for every single box. And that's when you know it's a spot the difference type one. Whereas the overwhelming type of shapes, it will be different shapes in each box, which is why it's overwhelming because there's no correlation between what shapes show up. But again, we have a different intuitive technique for that which you can use. And with experience, you'll be able to quite quickly tell whether this, this is the overwhelming amount of shapes type questions or whether this is a spot the difference type question as we're dealing with today. Finally before I summarize and give you some of the most important tips let me explain that if you are applying to medical school and you want some resources to help you get into your first choice medical school I have a webinar which is a must see so important that you can get on my channel page uh, and that's a 40 minute uh, webinar of all the most important things that you need to nail to make sure you get into your top choice university. And then if you want to be part of the program that I give, I have some students who I teach personally, you can also find details of how to join that there. So finally, to summarize, for this university clinical aptitude test, abstract reasoning, and we're looking at the spot the difference type questions, there are a few things that you can do to intuitively and quickly save time on these types of questions. And when you see these types of questions, those are three simple things, which are to look at the positioning, and remember to divide it into the noughts and crosses grid and scan each of those possible positions where you might see recurring shapes, uh, the other one is shading and finally conditional patterns which we shall have a look at in some subsequent lessons and my final tip is just the reminder to not get stuck into thinking position just means corners it can mean center it can mean middle of the edges as well make sure that you subscribe to the lessons here and look at my playlist look at all the videos so that you get a complete picture of how to tackle all these ucat questions in every single aspect in all the sections and it's going to help you do so well it's going to help you score highly in the university clinical aptitude test and particularly in these abstract reasoning sections thanks again so much for watching this video if you have any questions that you'd like to ask me about this or about anything to do with medicine or applying to medical school pop them in the comments and i'll answer straight away Thanks again and I'll see you soon.